assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum hi please take your seat thank you sir are you ready yes sir okay you can introduce yourself please uh, my name is asadullah malik i belong to sialkot district kotli lohara west village uh, i have completed my intermediate education from sialkot city then i moved to lahore and uh, completed my bachelor's in civil engineering from university of engineering and technology lahore afterwards uh, i moved to rawalpindi with my family and i got a private job there as structural engineer then i got selected in 2015 as assistant director technical bs17 in government of the punjab planning and development department i'm currently working as ad technical jlm during my service i also completed my must masters in structural engineering from uat texla that i completed in 2018 and 2018 afterwards i admired for competitive exams and then i landed here sir Uh, can you tell us uh, what are the functions of planning and development department under the rules of business under the rules of provincial business uh, planning and development department basically is a chief planning organization at the provincial level sir and what it does it basically coordinates the functions of different provincial departments at the provincial level number 1 sir number 2 it also prepares medium term development framework that is basically a development portfolio of the province of the province so basically everything planning and development has to do with the development activities of the province and it makes a liaison with development uh, line agencies of different departments like for example cnw department public health department local government department so it is a planning chief planning organization and regarding the rules of business sir it basically works uh, as a board it is basically pnd board and uh, chaired by uh, chairman pnd board and it is also serves as a house for pdwp basically that is provincial development working party that approves development schemes uh, of up to 400 million sir you hail from sialkot sir please give us the profile of district district sialkot uh such district sialkot is basically one of the populous uh, populous districts of uh, uh, of province punjab it is i think uh, comes at number 5 when we talk about population afterwards uh, sialkot is also famous for uh, different export industries for example sports number 1 number 2 surgical and number 3 leather industry these are the three main export industries for sialkot Uh, then i would like to mention uh, chamber of commerce of sialkot it is a very robust body that also uh, has developed its own uh, airport uh, from private funds and it is uh, still working furthermore sialkot has already launched its own airline air sial sir and that is still uh, in in function furthermore sialkot is also a part of uh, uh, three industrial cities we also call industrial triangle wazirabad sialkot and gujranwala this is industrial triangle so sialkot is one of the corner of that industrial triangle sir so what is the population of province of punjab uh, sir it is around uh, 110 million sir 110 uh, million. which is around 50% or 54% of total how many districts are there in the province of punjab sir presently it is 42 sir so what is the area of uh, province of punjab uh, sir it is around uh, uh, i'm not exactly sure about the figure okay you tell me the provincial assembly has been dissolved sir what is the procedure and under, under what article of the constitution it has been dissolved so basically uh, constitution uh, only allows the chief minister to dissolve the assembly when it is uh, when is it, it is in session number 1 sir number 2 under article 112 chief minister of uh, the constituents of the provincial assembly basically we, if we talk about punjab assembly so then chief minister according to the article 112 of the constitution can advise the governor to dissolve the assembly and if governor finds that advice up to the mark a governor ultimately dissolves the assembly and this is the rules and what is the article of the constitution uh, i think it is 112 sir 112 112 sir 112 clause 3 sir if i'm not i wrong. have read something about 112 sir there are there is a time span of 48 hours what is this time span i'm not they say that when the summary is received from the chief minister to the governor i would try to just elaborate it basically if uh, chief minister sends an advice to the governor 
and if governor doesn't assent the advice within 48 hours then that advice would ultimately be deemed to be assented by the governor so this is the time span of 48 hours basically if governor doesn't give his assention within 48 hours it is ultimately uh, be deemed to be assented by the governor Thank so this, these are the time spans Absolutely. for 48 hours welcome to csp's academy for css pms preparation CSS PMS तहरीरी इम्तहान के तमाम मजामी की ऑनलाइन और ऑन कैंपस तैयारी के साथ साथ सब्जेक्ट सिलेक्शन असाइनमेंट चेकिंग क्लास टेस्ट मॉक एग्जाम इंडिविजुअल टीचर डिस्कशन और फीडबैक सेशन का इनका किया जाएगा इसके अलावा एफ पी एस सी की तजवीज करदा बुक से बने मैारी नोट और सी एस पी पब्लिशर की बेहतरीन बुक्स मुहैया की जाएंगी रजिस्टर नाव एफ जीरो थ्री वन सिक्स Five seven zero one five nine three. Press is your first choice, sir. What is the what is the hierarchical structure of a district? Of uh, Pakistan Administrative Service? Yeah. No, no. The district. Uh, okay, district, sir. Uh, basically, districts. A district is headed by deputy commissioner, sir. Then, furthermore, it is uh, at the the seal level. Uh, the seal is headed by assistant commissioner, sir. at again i would come back to district level be, below the uh, deputy commissioner there are additional deputy commissioners adcg adcr and adc fnp there are three adcs uh, uh, there there is at the headquarter there is again ac headquarter at the tehsil levels again uh, when we talk about uh, the tehsil administration there is assistant commissioner sir uh, heading both the uh, tehsil administration number 1 and number 2 the land records and the uh, revenue authorities so this is the administration of the district sir uh police service is your second choice sir uh what are the uh, bottlenecks in the police working that it is it was generally believed that police has uh, failed to shoulder its responsibilities in, in the best possible manner so the topmost bottleneck that i would like to mention and i would like to highlight here would is the is the is the bridge is the gap between the prosecution and the investigation uh, the two things that make any uh, alleged uh, offender convict in the court of law so we are not getting convictions basically and this makes police more demoralized and that is why then its performance get more affected so the the major bottleneck we have is the is the mismatch between the between the prosecution and the investigation if we if we somehow manage to overcome this bottleneck police would be working much better sir that, uh, that's all that is there, the only one there are there are many other things sir for example there there is a resource uh, scarcity for example we have uh, less logistics and uh, police also need more uh, advanced weaponry in the recent surge we are seeing in kp side in uh, counter terrorist department they have night visions and other uh, artillery with heavy artillery with them police is lacking in that so there are many many things but but again i would like to say that the thing when 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 police catches any criminal then again it it gots off the hook because of the conviction sir that is one area sir there are many others sir okay fine uh what was kai's vision vision for pakistan uh, I, i would like to uh, say in this regard that uh, kai azam uh, was a uh, was an enlightened man and uh, it basically gave the vision that muslims as well as non muslims would both live in the country prosperity with, with prosperity with uh, with ease of doing business with ease of professing their own religions and uh, th this ultimately means that qaid azam i would say in my opinion have had a secular mind uh, regarding the uh, state of pakistan sir and uh, ultimately qaid azam was a more of a pluralistic man than an uh, exclusionary one okay there is there are two naps you see uh, one is the national election sir plan sir. and the other one is the there is another nap i mean uh, which is currently being debated sir what is that about it is with regard to the climate change the conference which took place recently there pakistan uh, the minister of yes, climate sir. change yes sir she uh, you see sir. stated that that this is what pakistan is going to do uh, that is the adaptation part of sir sir 
the efforts that are required. The, the second app that you are uh, mentioning is National Adaptation Plan. Yes. And uh, recently uh, we had a conference in Geneva, Switzerland regarding the uh, resilient Pakistan, climate resilient Pakistan. And at that conference, the state functionaries presented the framework that is known as 4RF. Uh, resilient recovery, reconstruction and rehabilitation and this program basically and this framework basically what it does it, it it tries to portray the resilience of Pakistan and how would it make further uh, adaptable to the climate changes that we are facing right now uh, regarding the floods and other things and furthermore uh, in the conference uh, we had pledges from different countries and different bilaterals and multilaterals of around nine billion dollars so uh, basically the second name is about national adaptation plan and we are we are focusing on that sir you did your you spent 8 years to get your two engineering degrees sir. then you worked for 4 years in your field sir and still you want to switch over to the civil service of pakistan sir, sir. why what purpose will it serve for you sir uh, i would like to just uh, mention uh, one more thing sir i had been in field for around 8 years sir i joined the field in 2014 as private partner of uh, a consultancy firm then in 2015 i joined the public sector basically the part of administration that administers the development works on the ground in different dis districts and f uh, and i'm still on service Basically, through this service of around seven years in public service, I have I have seen a lot of things happening around. I have developed an, an ambition uh, to be on the other side of the table, where I can make a very well versed policies regarding the development and the administration activities. So that developed an ambition in me, and ultimately, why, why can't you do that in your own field for twelve years? For twelve years, you have been in, in that field. Sir. It, uh, as far as your sir, education sir, is concerned for practical experience. So, uh, again, I would say, sir, uh, that shows uh, you lack commitment. Uh, uh, that is uh, one of uh, your opinion, and I, I respect that, sir. But I would still uh, like to add here that uh, I have been a part of monitoring and execution uh, administration of the of the district or maybe the provincial planning and development department okay, okay let's, so move, oh, let's move on uh, in your uh, strengths and weaknesses you have mentioned uh, st your strength is time management sir. and weakness is too much detail oriented but don't you think these are too contradictory yeah how can you be a good time management if you indulge in too much detail uh, orientation join csps where we believe that your dreams are our mission so let us be your partners in this transformative journey as we equip you with knowledge confidence and resilience required to emerge as css stoppers contact us on our given whatsapp number 0316-570-1593 or visit our website www.csps.com.pk uh, basically, uh, that is why I have mentioned there that it is a, some a, some kind of weakness for me because. But you have written time sir, management is sir, your sir. time management means that you can manage your time. Sir. You will not waste your time in in travel issues. You, you're right, sir. Uh, but uh, if you uh, want my opinion, I would like to add that time management basically is a good strength for me because I have being in the service and being in different uh, sectors of life uh, are ab is able to manage my time but for but the weakness that you are uh, mentioning and I have mentioned there is the detail orientation so, so it, it is a, a kind of weakness because it inhibits me to manage my time uh, very well so that is why you are right sir I would agree with that uh, Mr. Bilawal Bhutto uh, toured a uh, lot of countries sir. he traveled extensively uh, what, uh, how has it benefited Pakistan? Um, I mean, in, in what manner uh, sir, has I, it strengthened Pakistan's position at the global level and uh, in diplomatic terms, economic terms, and? Yeah, okay, sir. I, I would, I would like to start with again with the Geneva conference. For example, Bilawal Bhutto was there, and other state functionaries were there. So, uh, what it, what these people were doing there, they were portraying our case there diplomatically, uh, with different facts and figures. So, it, 
it it really helped us in financial terms for example pledges of like 10 billion dollars are uh, are at our hand number one again bilawal bhutto was uh, recently in uh, United Nations uh, uh, conference, United Nations General Assembly session. At that session, again, he was presenting the case of Kashmir and other uh, Pakistan foreign policy issues, and he was uh, rebutting uh, the Indian side. So again, it was a political advantage for us. So whenever a foreign minister and other, uh, or any other diplomat uh, is around the world of any country, he is trying to just, or maybe she is trying to just portraying the case of that country, and that ultimately benefits the country, sir. Okay. Uh, Asadullah Malik, you have studied international law. Can you tell me what does it mean, common heritage of mankind? Common heritage of mankind? Mm -hmm. Basically, there is a concept in international law, ma'am, uh, regarding the different parts of uh, globe or maybe out of the globe. For example, I would like to mention here the open seas, number one. Uh, the or I would like to rephrase the term high seas, high seas number one, number two uh, the space. So these are the things uh, for and furthermore Antarctica and Arctic uh, circles. So these are the things that humanity considers as a part, as a collective part, and it ultimately has turned into a legal concept that these are the uh, these are, these are the things that humanity can uh, can can own for their own betterment. So this is the common heritage of mankind, madam. And no country in legal perspective can ultimately capture or uh, take benefit uh, exclusively from that parts. Thank you very much. Uh, who was the initiator of Human Rights Declaration? I'm, I'm afraid I cannot remember the name exactly of that. But you're talking about some personality? Yes. I'm sorry, ma'am. I cannot remember the name exactly. Thank you. Uh, what is the difference between uh, treaties and agreements? Treaties are, are a kind of agreements uh, between different states and agreements are, are is a more general term and uh, it is, uh, it is uh, between different parties, uh, different non-state actors even. So these are the agreements. Agreements is a broader and vague term. Treaties are more or a legal and specific terms. You've also studied physics. Tell me uh, if Einstein's theory of relativity, does it defy Newton's laws? Uh, Ma'am, uh, I would like to mention here that basically New Newton's laws is a, is a, a part of classical physics and uh, Einstein theory of relativity, uh, two parts are there, general and special. Basically, it, it ultimately redefined the physics and ultimately gave, gave the concept of modern physics. So, Newton was basically uh, giving, the, the, uh, giving the three uh, principles in the realm of classical physics where uh, there was a, a frame of inertia and there were other different things. But Einstein ultimately developed a very new and novel concept in which there were no frame of reference, there, everything is relative. Space and time is intricate with either there is there is a fabric of frame uh, space and time and gravity is defined by that fabric. So these are different parts and ultimately, uh, as you have earlier uh, mentioned, uh, Einstein new theory that is the theory of relativity redefined the physics and gave the concept of modern physics. Give your career a boost with CSS PMS preparation. From Civil Services Preparatory School. Join CSS PMS for on campus and online classes. Join us for your bright future. Civil Services Preparatory School, Jitan Markaz, Islamabad. Register now at 0316 570 1593. Thank you very much, Asim. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I said, uh, tell briefly uh, something very important about the rumble in the jungle. Rumble in the general? Yes. Um, this I'm, is a fight. Muhammad Ali Boxer is your favorite one. Okay. Uh, uh, I have mentioned that personality as my favorite man. Yes. But exactly I don't know about the boxing. Uh, the, the thing that makes this personality my favorite personality is because of his motivation and his uh, stand to the principle. And I would like to mention uh, here an incident uh, if you allow me, sir. Sure. Basically, uh, Muhammad Ali just rose from the ashes and uh, became a world, uh, world uh, famous name uh, in America 
एंड ही ही वन डिफरेंट वर्ल्ड चैंपियंस डिफरेंट वर्ल्ड बॉक्सिंग चैंपियंस एंड डिफरेंट टाइटल्स ऑफ वर्ल्ड फेम बट इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज इन नाइनटीन Uh, united states was uh, was conscripting different people for vietnam war in which year in 1950s sir sure vietnam wars were uh, when happened vietnam war 1955 to 1975 okay so uh, us uh, was conscripting different people and uh, muhammad ali just uh, surrendered his titles but he took his stand that i'm not going to war with people around the world so i that makes me motivated for him sir what was the last fight of mohammed ali i still could not able to recall that fight sir okay uh, what are totalitarian regimes sir totalitarian regimes basically uh, is the extreme uh, of, uh, version of the authoritarian regimes and uh, if you like to uh, like me to uh, name some of those regimes i would like to name uh, russia Mm-hmm. i would also name uh, in the recent uh, is it uh, russia or ussr sir, presently it is russia sir okay and uh, i would like also like to name myanmar recently because there is a coup uh, in uh, two years back there and ultimately there is no press freedom there and these type of characteristics make a regime a totalitarian regime sir okay what is a revisionist state the revisionist state basically tries to revision their ideologies re- revise their history revise everything uh, that makes the uh, vision of that state and revisionist states that ultimately challenges the uh, established international orders established norms established traditions and in the recent uh, 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 recent past i would again like to mention russia because russia is just Uh, abolishing the international norms of settled boundaries and invading Ukraine, so the, the, these these uh, uh, traits again makes the state revisionist state states. Okay, how Great Depression in United States of America caused rise of dictatorial regime in Europe? Uh, sir, uh, basically uh, the Great Depression in 1930s uh, that was ultimately the result of the policies that was adopted. between europe and united states of america in world war 1 ultimately the depression came and when the depression came again the economic the, the stringent economic policies that was made in the united states ultimately made the totalitarian re- leaders in the european side Uh, more uh, more of more on the right side and uh, more authoritarian and ultimately we see the rise of uh, hitler we see the rise of mussolini in the european side so these are the basically the result of the policies that were adopted during the great depression in the united states what is fordism fordism yes uh, i have uh, not heard this okay term. what you see what was there any connection between rod act introduced in subcontinent by the british regime with the world war 1 what was the connection uh, sir i would uh, not able to recall the exact details but rowlett acts were the acts that were uh, that were put forward in 1920s basically to suppress the freedom of expression freedom of speech and uh, um, and if i'm not wrong the ultimately uh, the jallianwala bag tragedy was the outcome of the rowlett acts so this is what i can recall sir okay thank you chale okay let's conclude this uh, formal session sir i said how you assess your performance uh, this performance that i have given sir uh, uh, would you like me to rate out of 10 sir no just tell me do you are you comfortable what you have been uh, replying the level of kaise karoge ko tell out of 10 bata do it is not up to the mark i would say it is not 10 out of 10 but i would rate it 7 out of 10 sir 7 out of 10 sir acha ye dekho briefly to way mai bata raha hu baat ye hai this is a event of life sir theek hai you are not in a state of preparedness sir halat e jang mein nahi hai sir interview ka event hota hai once in a life Now you will not get any other chance, sir. This is how I feel. So, in this, I have a little bit of hard work. Okay. Go and recast it. Make it an introduction. Make it into a one-pager. In one minute, you have to, have to sell yourself. In one minute, you have to sell yourself. Make a one-pager. Make it into a one-pager. And in that, see what you want to say. Right, sir. Your personal accomplishment, what you have done. 
आपने खुद ही डिसाइड करना है यू हैव ए फाइन पर्सनैलिटी यूर इंटेलिजेंस लेवल इज फाइन कम्युनिकेशन स्किल तुम्हारे ठीक है ओवरऑल एंड बॉडी लैंग्वेज भी ठीक है पोस्टर ठीक है तुम्हारा यू लुक गुड कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल भी तुम मेनटेन करते हो नॉलेज इज गुड कंपेरेटिवली बेहतर है और बट यू स्टिल नीड टू इम्प्रूव योर सेल्फ न्यूज पेपर पे जोर दो आजकल गुजशत दो तीन महीने के न्यूज पेपर भी देखो नेशनल इंटरनेशनल ये खबरें ठीक है और अपना जो इंट्रोडक्शन है ना उसको थोड़ा सा रिकास्ट करो वन पेजर वन मिनट बिल्कुल सही सर थैंक यू देखिए आप जब इंटरव्यू के लिए आते हैं ना उसमें आप ड्रेस का आपको ख्याल कर लें ठीक है ये आप सूट है टाई वाई बिल्कुल ठीक है एक दो चीजें हैं मैंने कहा बाकी ठीक है बाकी राही साहब ने आपको बता दिया अच्छा इन्होंने ऑलरेडी आपको गाइड कर दिया योर शर्ट शुड बी प्रॉपर बट योर कलर कम्बिनेशन योर शूज योर ड्रेस इज फाइन सिर्फ ये है यू शुड लुक अमेक्यूलेट बिकॉज एवरी थिंग यू डू इज अ स्टेटमेंट सो वेन यू एंटर दैट इट सेल्फ इज अ स्टेटमेंट सो यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन इट जैसे दुरानी साहब ने कहा प्रैक्टिस इन फ्रंट ऑफ द मेरा so that you know your words should be very guarded well guarded and uh basically your introduction is what you are attracting your panelists to right now so you should only say things that you want to attract them to which is your strength right now if you just uh, ramble out then uh, you can fall in a trap right now so it should be very cogent coherent and focused right and you should practice it in front of the mirror right how you are sitting how you are speaking your knowledge is good your personality is good but i would recommend jo aapka thoda knowledge gap hai usko fill kare right aur apne practice kare uh, shishe kya right thank you, you. so much thank you and asal the aapke answers theek the 70% theek the but the way you deliver your answers was not what that indicates that you are not in a state of preparedness right theek hai aapne aapke jo optional subjects hain wo might be reason ki aapne sciences padhi hui hain so you need to revise aur inko kisi jaise mirror practice hai inko bhi questions khud raise kare khud answer kare aapka delivery ka aur aapki dates ka aapko bahut issue hai abhi jo answers mein bataiye hain inko revise kar kijiyega aapke ye एरिया जो थोड़ा सा ग्रे एरिया है सर इसको देख लीजिए नोट इट सर सर नोट सर तो अभी थोड़ा सा हिम्मत करो बैठ जाओ छुट्टी वुटी लेके बैठ जाओ सर स्लीप वेल बिफोर यू गो फॉर राइट सर शार्पनेस आनी चाहिए माइंड की ठीक हो गया न्यूज़पेपर राइट सर दैट विल हेल्प यू राइट सर बेस्ट ऑफ लक थैंक यू सर थैंक यू मैम